Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. And happy new month to us. Glory be to God. Wow. Give God the glory for this beautiful day. Indeed, the Lord says, said to me, Today, I'm going to invade many homes, many offices, many many vehicles with my glory. Today is going to be heaven on earth for you in the name of Jesus. So get ready to testify because the sick are going to get healed right now. And indeed, you're going to receive spiritual downloads, gift from heaven, heavenly realm in the name of Jesus. Wow, today I'm bringing the word of God to us that says, Hearing, seeing, and walking in his word. Hearing, seeing, and walking in his word. My name remains Apostle Gabriel Chuke Buka Okafo, and I'm excited to be here with us. Glory be to God. Hearing, seeing, and walking in his word. Let's first of all start by understanding that, you see, every child that is born into this world, before the child is born into this world, there is something that has been proven that, you know, that happens to these children first. Every child that is yet to be born into the world can hear in the, in the mother's belly. In the mother's womb. Yes. A new child, a newborn, a new a newborn that is still in the mom's womb can hear you talk. You see that? So that means children that are still in the in the mother's womb can hear. Before they are being born into this world. And so they're going to be looking at the at the stages of life, of a Christian life. The first stage is what hearing, second is seeing, and then walking in his word. That means for the hearing aspect, look at the book of Romans 10, verse 14 to 15. It says, but how can people hear on him for help if they don't, if, if, if they have not yet believed? And how can they believe in one they have not yet heard of? And how can they hear the message of life if there is no one there to proclaim it? So that tells you and I that just the way a child who is still in the mother's womb can hear the voice, you know, from this earthly realm. That is how today. Believers who are born into the into the heavenly realm. We are them that speak to them who are outside this heavenly realm. Hallelujah. We speak to them and then they hear the word of God. That's the way the scripture says here. It says, it says, call on him for help if they have not yet believed. So for them to believe, it says, and how can they believe in one? That one is Jesus. They have not yet heard of. Hallelujah. So, so every child, anybody you see out there, understand something. Just, just, just as the Bible says in the, in the book of Psalms 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Know something that everybody you see out there, the word of God has been settled in heaven concerning that person. Now the person now has been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Every man that you see out there. So now it takes you and I to preach the gospel, for them to hear the gospel and what get what join this earthly realm join this what heavenly realm the way we are currently glory be to god because any man that is born again is born into a realm that is called the heavenly realm that's the, the heavenly kingdom realm of god hallelujah before you are born again you are living in a different realm entirely so are living in the realm of darkness but when you are born again you are called you are brought, you are brought into christ and in Christ, that means about to what the kingdom of, of, his, of his son Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you must understand that for any man that is yet to be born into this kingdom, all they need to do is what to hear the gospel, to hear the message. That's how they can believe. Glory be to God. So you must understand that even if a child is not yet born into this world, they can hear. That tells you another. It doesn't matter whatever you see that is happening out there. Concerning the people that you love, the concerning the people that you know you see your, your colleagues in the office misbehaving, behaving in the way they ought not to behave because they're not born again, or your family members are not behaving the way they should behave because they're not born again. Don't be the one that is always accusing them that they're not doing the right thing. No. All that God is calling to do was is to pre- keep praying for them, and then as we pray for them, keep speaking the word to them, keep planting that seed of the word of God. Hallelujah. Because now understand something that if a, 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 if, if a child is formed in the mother's womb because a man had to plant the seed into the woman's womb, right, in form of sperm, that tells you and I that for us to be able to bring anyone forth into this heavenly kingdom realm, we must keep scattering the seed, glory be to God, of the word of God. Is the word of God because now they can hear in that in that place where they are outside this heavenly kingdom realm. They can hear you, so you keep planting the seed of the word of God. That is why today the Lord has called us to preach the gospel with boldness everywhere. Hallelujah! Now understand another thing again that whatever you are saying to God to these people are Holy Spirit breathed. 
That means it's not by your own by your own strength or by your own power, but the Spirit of God will lead you on what to say, so that you can plant the seed in their hearts, and then they can come what to join this heavenly kingdom realm. Hallelujah. The book of Romans 10 verse 9 says something to us. We, can, we should look into it. It says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is how every one of us get, got saved. And that is how you can get many saved. Hallelujah. And for them to believe, they must first of all what? hear the word. That word must be planted in them. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible says that we are born of the word. Because the seed that the man gave to the woman that made her to breathe for that child was the sperm. And that today, you and I, the seed that we plant in many that are outside the, the heavenly kingdom realm is the word of God. That would bet every man that comes into the kingdom realm of God. Hallelujah. Into Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. So we're going to be preaching the next level. So now that you have he preached the gospel to, you have confessed Jesus as a Lord and Savior. You have fulfilled that scripture that Romans 10 verse 9 that says you declare with your mouth. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. When you say Jesus is Lord, it means that what? He owns me. Jesus is Lord. Why? Because I have heard the message. Now you have believed the message that you heard. And you have declared that he is Lord over your life. He now owns you. No longer do you belong to yourself or to the word, occultic word or to the word of, word of darkness. Now Jesus owns you. And then you believe it in your heart that he raised you from the dead. Hallelujah. From the dead means that what anything, anywhere, that, that, that's the realm of death that you are, you are inside. Because in Christ Jesus is the realm of life. Now you believe I have moved from the realm of death to the realm of life. You are now what? Saved. Glory be to God. Congratulations. Hallelujah. If you are saved, congratulations. I mean, you have to be saved. You will be saved today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just go ahead and say, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. Call unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he has saved you from that realm of darkness you are right now. And he's bringing to his own, his own realm of life. That is his kingdom realm. And, and now you are saved in the name of Jesus. Yes, go ahead and declare it. Lord Jesus Save me from this realm of darkness. Take me, Lord, to your own realm of heavenly kingdom, your own heavenly kingdom realm. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. Jesus is my Lord. He's my Savior. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes, it has happened in your life in the name of Jesus. Now, the second thing that begins to happen in your life, now that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he says what? Hearing, seeing, and walking in the word of God, in his word. So the second thing is what? Seeing. You must begin to see the word. Now you have, you have come into Christ. Because it, it takes a child to come into this world. And when a child has been born into the world, the first thing that children who are born into the world, in this physical realm, they do, is that their eyes begin to what, open. Now they can see. So Lord wants you to what, see. And then for you to have come into this world, they're going to what, they're come to a newness of life. Everything about, about, about this world is new to you. But when your eyes are open to see, now you can see the glory of the world they have come into. Hallelujah. You can see the beauty of the world they have come into. Just imagine a child, a, a, a newborn baby. Now the eyes have, have now and that child, when it was in the, in the womb of, of the mom, the child could not see, could not open the eyes. The child was just in darkness. But that child has been born into this world. Now the child can open the eyes and see the glorious things of about this world. Hallelujah. That is how you and I are born into Christ. Now our eyes, the first thing that God does for us what, is open our eyes to his inheritance. Now we can see the glorious things he has given us. Glory be to God. That's why the book of Ephesians 1 verse 18 says something to us. Ephesians 1 18. I read from the Passion Translation. It says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. The light of God will do what? Illuminate the, the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in us, his holy ones. Hallelujah. So now you have come into this world that is called Christ. Now you, are, now you are in Christ and Christ is in God. What happens to you? Your eyes are open to see this glorious inheritance that you have in Christ Jesus. That God has given you. He says that, that he finds in us his holy ones. So that for you to see these things, that means what? You must be his holy ones. And how do you become his holy ones? The day that you accepted the word of God. When you are still in, in, the dark, in that dark place you were. Because children in the womb, they don't see. In the womb, they don't see anything. It's, just about, it's all about darkness. Their eyes are even closed. But when you are coming to Christ, hallelujah. Now you are born into this world called Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Into, into Christ. Right? Because God, the Lord just said something. said to the disciples, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. That place that's going to prepare is in himself, and that's Christ. Glory be to God. Now you're coming to Christ. What happens? Your eyes now begin to what? 
He says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate your eyes of your imagination. Now you begin to see the glorious inheritance that God has given you in His Son, Jesus Christ. You see, now that light, that light has come to you. You cannot see gloriously. Hallelujah. No more are you in darkness, but now you can see. Hallelujah. No matter how beautiful a place is, if that place is dark, you can't see the glory of that place. But when I throw light on that, on that same place that you are, the place that used to be dark, and you couldn't see anything about the place, the beauty of the place. Maybe the place was even coated with gold, and the place is looking all glorious. But because the place is dark, you can't see anything. But if I throw light, now you can see the glorious thing about that place. What do you do? Now you can be what to be what to do what appreciate what has been given to you in that area. Hallelujah. In that place I've been called into. So also in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are called what to inlet our eyes of what our eyes of our what, imagination by flooding us with light. And where does that light come from? From his word. He says, until you express the full revelation of the hope of his calling. So if you're not walking in the light of his word, that's because of what? You are here to see the, word, the, the, see the glory that God has given you. This glory inheritance. The, in, in Christ Jesus you have been healed. That's his glory inheritance. In him it became poor that you made, made rich. Now it became poor that you made rich. That means what? Everything you would ever need in this life has been given to you. Wisdom is given to you in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything you would ever need in this life. Hallelujah. This glorious inheritance you have received in him. That you that live beyond this earthly realm. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's why the book of John chapter 8 verse 12 says something to us. Jesus said, in book uh, John 8 verse 12, Jesus said, I am light to the world. I am what? Light to the world. And who is darkness to the world? Satan is darkness to the world. Satan is one that blinds men from seeing the glorious things about, about the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, but Jesus says, I am the light to the world. That means if you want to see this word that he has given you of, of, of in himself, he says, What well, I'm light to the world, the world they are living right now, even. The one that has blinded men and men men know not to see the glory that God has given us as children of men is Satan. He said, I am light to the world. And those who embrace me will experience life-giving light. Life-giving light. That means God wants to flood you with light. So that you can see the glory that has given you. Because if you cannot see it, you cannot take hold of it. But if you can see it, you can hold on to it. Hallelujah. It can possess your possession. It can take hold of what is yours in the name of Jesus. He said, they will never walk in darkness. So because of that light of the gospel, you will never what? walk in darkness. This is why we must get to the word of God. And what's the third stage again? After you have been given, now begin to see these things that the Lord has done for you and I in Son Jesus Christ. What happens to you? Now begin to what? walk in them. You begin to walk in them. That's why you look at that same scripture we read earlier. Ephesians 1 verse 18. Let us say something to us. It says that in the, it says, it says, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That's an unto. So just when the child it comes, I begin to see now. Now the child begins to what? Practice how to walk. The child will walk some more and fall. The child will begin to crawl, begin to walk and then fall. The, what's the aim of crawling? Is to be able to walk. Freely, what's the aim of crawling and, and walking and falling? To be able to walk freely, that's the way that you now begin to see this glory that God has done for you. Some have been to practice how to put the work to um, you know to to, um, to work in your life. You be before, you know, you fell into that sin that you, you used to do before. That, don't, that doesn't make you a sinner, no. And you, you, when you did something that you ought not have done, it doesn't make you a sinner. Because if you're a sinner, you would have enjoyed what you had done. But when you did it, you, you had remorse. You, you repented from what you did. And because of what? God has given you a nature of, of himself. That nature of holiness is in you. That makes you reject that nature of sin. That, that, is no, longer, that, no, no, that not, no longer belongs to you. Hallelujah. So now you begin to walk, crawl, begin to crawl, begin to walk. But at the end of it, that's what? That you will, you will, you will, you will until you experience the full revelation. Now begin to walk freely like a man. Hallelujah. Walk freely like a man of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of the glory of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in all the holy ones. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now look at the book of Psalms 119 verse, one, uh, verse 130. Psalm 119 verse 130 says, Break open your word within me until revelation light shines out. That is when you now begin to walk in God's word. Hallelujah. When it shines out, remember you are born of the word, of the word of God. The word of God that was planted in you, where you are still in darkness, and now the word of God is still manifesting in you, opens your eyes to see what God has given you in Son Jesus Christ, and now the word of God being flooding inside of you, and able to walk in the word. 
We got to walk in the word of God. So, brothers and sisters, I believe that by the grace of God from today, this new month, may it be a month of the word of God be fulfilled in your life in the name of Jesus. That this new month you be conscious to walk in God's word. Every day you keep on getting God's, God's word into your spirit. Hallelujah. Get more of God's word into your spirit. Continually get the word of God in your spirit. Just the way the Lord said in the book of John chapter 8 verse 31 to 32. Jesus said to those disciples who believed in him, when you continue to embrace all that I teach, you prove that you are my true followers. For if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your life. True freedom comes by you what having to embrace the word of God. So get to the word of God. Let this word, let this month be the word of uh, the, the month of what the word of God be fulfilled in your life. Get to the word of God. Have a, start, a, a, a Bible study time as God's holy ones. And, you are, and now that you are born again. Now you have made just, just Christ the Lord of your life. Get to the word of God. Grow and know, know let your eyes be open to see the heritage that is in Christ Jesus. And now, and God will help you by his spirit to walk the word in your life. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Congratulations for them that have received the healing power of God. I know as we are ministering, some we are healed. You feel the touch of God. Congratulations to you. I remember Apostle Gabriel Chukwebuka Okafo. And I know you want to reach us, they reach, um, reach out to us. Can you call this number? We are here to answer your phone calls, 081-055-44424.